so let's go back at this. Uh, Warm-up number 112 is on the screen. And uh, just to recap what we did before the uh, Easter break, number one says graph the circle x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 6y plus 2 equal to 0. Number two, simplify using long division. We got 3x minus 11 over x minus 4. Number three says simplify. We got log of base 5 and to get the number 625. And number five, compute the missing length of the right triangle, then identify tangent of angle B. So we go to the right triangle where C is in the right angle, and B and A from top to bottom is the uh, hypotenuse. That's labeled X. And the, uh, the legs at the bottom, which is the base, it's labeled three. The height is labeled four. So uh, compute for X, and then from there find tangent angle B. All right, we'll be just about done with number one. All right, let's pause this real quick. All right, I think Andres got all of them already, so uh, let's see where we're at. But being that it's Monday, I'm going to go over them, I guess, one more time. So let me go over number one really quick. So for number one, Uh, it says uh, graph the circle. So first we need this in standard form, which means we need to uh, divide by the leading coefficient, the invisible one. So if I divide, I end up with the same thing. I get rid of the constant, minus 2, minus 2. I end up with x squared minus 6x. All that in the parentheses leave a space to, M to complete the square. And then the y's together, y squared plus 6y, empty space, and all that equals to negative 2. <coughs> From there, we complete the square here, so we add negative 6 over 2 squared, and we do that to both sides. Negative 6 over 2 squared, and here we add 6 over 2 squared, and we do that to both sides. 6 over 2 squared, so we end up here with x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared plus 6y plus 9, and all that equal to negative 2 plus 9 plus 9. So far, so good, yeah? Yes, yes, you do. All right, good. Combine and factor. I'm going to combine this side. What is 18 minus 2? That is 16. Factor this side, square root of the first, square root of the last, x and 3, sine of the middle, squared, plus square root of the first, square root of the last, sine of the middle, squared. Hands, have you got that? All right. Center. We know that it's h, which is 3. k, this is supposed to be a negative, so this would be negative 3. And the radius, we take the square root of 16, which is 4. So my graph at 3, negative 3, and 4 steps in all directions. So 4 steps this way, this way, this way, and this way. And it looks something like that. And if you got that, okay, good. Number two, it says use long division. So we got 3x minus 11 divided by x minus 4. So what number times x gives us 3x? That is 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. We're going to subtract, which means I distribute that negative here and here. So this cancels, we're left with 1, so we end up with 3 plus the remainder of 1 over x minus 4. We can't have the constant here, it goes in the back. So answer, 1 over x minus 4 plus 3. And if you got that, say good. Let's go to number 3, log base 5, 625. So we're going to try and write 625 and base 5, so that is log base 5, 5 to the what gives us 625? 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 that's 125, times 5 that's 625, so that's 5 to the 4th. If this is the same as this, therefore this is 4. And if you got that, okay. Last but not least, you use the uh, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. You end up with 16 plus 9, that's 25, square root of 25, so this is 5 units. 
So therefore, tangent of angle B, here's angle B, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, so tangent angle B. What angle is, I mean, what side is opposite to angle B? Three, what is the adjacent? Four, because this is the hypotenuse, so that's three over four. And so you got that. All right. Good warm up, right? Yeah? Now we just need to go run the mile or something, right? All right, here we go. Uh, agenda, warm up number 112, semester two concepts and skills. Like I said, we're going to try and finish up uh, hopefully by Thursday the whole thing, maybe Wednesday. Uh, but Wednesday we have minimum day, so I don't know. Therefore, uh, you know, we'll try our best to get there. And uh, if, as soon as you're done finishing uh, copying the agenda, and this is being recorded, uh, go to Canvas really quick. Go to your grades, take a screenshot, and you're going to bring that sign tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's going to serve as a pop parte. And this is not just to uh, remind you guys, but just to make sure your parents know exactly where you're at with your grade before we get to the final semester final and all that. So, you know, maybe they'll take you to McDonald's, get you a Happy Meal or something. You know? Yeah, because uh, if you notice, the, uh, the latest assignments, I've been weighing them pretty, weight, pretty heavy, 500, 600 points, yes. So if you've been missing some of those, then your score pretty much uh, suffered a little bit. So make sure you're keeping up with your scores, please. So once again, go to Canvas, go to Grades, take a screenshot. You're going to bring that back tomorrow. That counts as a pop part A. And yes, it's recorded in case you guys come tomorrow. You didn't say that, Mr. Q. Well, there it is. All right, last home play before uh, we went to break. Uh, I gave you guys Psalms 8 to 13, but then I said in break, take a break, right? You unplugged? Everybody unplugged? Yes? Everybody's refreshed? Yeah? <laughs> no? Uh, I worked on my garden, so I, I was like, so I was in my, in my zone. I just put some music on, and I was like, got some petunias and some uh, mint, uh, I have nopales. You guys know what nopales are, right? Like cactuses and stuff. Uh, so I, I put a whole plethora of uh, of uh, plants. So, but then all of a sudden I'm like, you know, my mind it's like, okay. So I'm counting and I'm like, okay, 13. I need six, and then my mind doesn't stop. So anyway, so I hope you guys got some rest. Are you guys ready to go? Rock and roll, yeah. All right, so get a blank sheet of paper. We're going to continue with our uh, community uh, study of our cumulative study guide. And our objective for today, I can master all semester two concepts and skills. I can master all semester two concepts and skills. You don't need a fair model, just get a Cornell note. And also get your study guide out, because we're going to be also like referencing to that. I'm going to give you uh, probably some problems off my uh, my screen and then we'll go from there and pause this really quick. With that said, quick uh, refreshing on our noodle. Here we go. Uh, before we go and continue with transformations and graphing, I, I already told you we, uh, we went from number 9 through 13 and uh, no, number 8 <coughs> through 13, bless you. And we started being bombarded with graphing and transformations. We're going to continue on this transformation uh, road for the next uh, another six, seven problems. So, just to refresh in our memory, last time we met, I covered transformation and graphs, and I gave you, uh, once again, the general rule. You don't have to copy this, just a quick uh, review. G of X equals A times function of parentheses 1 over BX minus H plus K. Once again, K is our parameter that goes up or down, depending if it's a positive or negative. H goes from side to side, goes to the right if we substitute a positive number in here, which makes it x minus whatever that number. Or if we substitute a negative number in here, it becomes x plus whatever that number is, and it goes to the left. From there, we said b, if it, there's a fraction inside with x, that means that b uh, either stretches or compresses horizontally. And a, at the beginning of the whole thing, stretches or compresses vertically. 
From there, we covered parent functions, their graphs, uh, what quadrant it starts, what quadrant it finishes, and what kind of uh, exponent is it? Is it an odd or is it an even? So we talked about linear function, quadratic function, cubic, quartic, rational. That's where we start. Uh, that's where we stop. Today, we're going to continue with rationals. But look at this. Just once again, recap. All the odds, we said, all the ones with odd exponents on the variable of x, like this one, uh, 1 over x, or x cubed, or x, all are odd, and they begin at quadrant 3 and end at quadrant 1. All the ones with evens, x squared, x to the fourth, or 1 over x squared, always begin at quadrant 2 and end at quadrant 1. Quadrant 2, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 1, even for the rationals. So we're so good, yeah? So, and then we said, but if we put a leading coefficient here, a negative, negative for all of these, what is it going to do to each of these functions? It's going to do the what? It's going to flip it, or it's going to invert it, or reflect it about the x, okay? So, with that said, okay. All right, let's go to number, we left off on number 13. Do I recap number 13 or will we move on to 14? What do you guys think? 14? All right, let's go to 14. So let's go to, let me get my study guide here. Let's go to number 14. All right. So look at this one. Let me zoom in. Before you answer, Uh, I want you to go to this graph right here. This is the parent function f of x equals x squared. So label that one, please, with your pencil. This one, this function, this is f of x equals x squared. Okay? So before we answer the, the question that they're asking us there at the study guide, I want to make sure everybody understands how to write our function given the parent function. So here we go. So if I was to give you uh, and say, I want you to transform this function, so that means the new transform function starts with what? G of x, yes? Yes, Mr. Q. All right. But then we take the x squared, and then at the end we can add something to move it up or down, or right here move it side to side. So. Before I do anything else here, sorry neighbor, what I need to substitute in here and here, if I wanted to move this one, four to the left and two up, four to the left and two up. Sorry neighbor, what we need to substitute in there. All right, we got it, good conversations. All right, I think uh, Andres got it. Andres, go. What do we substitute here to move it to the left? Four. Hands, do you agree with that? Close. Set to the left. What do we need to substitute? Negative four. Negative four to go to the left. All right, so that means uh, this would be g of x equals x plus four squared. I just want to make sure I'm clear with that. Because some of you still get confused with this plus and the minus here. We're substituting a value in order for us to move the original one. Okay, so to move it, we substituted a negative. Okay, next, we said two down. So, Andres, negative two. Yeah, that is correct. So there's our new transform function. Let's do another one. I'm going to switch to red. G of x equals x minus is part of the general rule, squared. So, now I want to move this um, one to the right and five down. One to the right, five down. So you never what to substitute and where. One to the right, five down. All right. Okay, I think Andres got this one. All right. 
Andres, find someone. Maya. One to the left, I mean one to the right, and five, was it five down or four down? Five down. What do I do? One right here. Uh-huh. And then? Mm -hmm. Minus five. Hands, have you got that? That is correct. I substituted in here. This is a positive number. That's why we're going to the right. You're like, but I see a negative, Mr. Q. This is part of the general rule. Remember the general rule? Yeah, it needs to have a negative there. And five down. That is correct. Now with that information, they're asking us to select the graph according to this. Look at it. Tell your neighbor what, what this is going to do to our original parent function, please. What is that going to do to our original parent function? And select your answer on your study guide. So, Maya, pass the mic. Pedro, answer. A, B, C, or D. Let's see how you did. D. Hands if you selected D. Let's, let's see. This says four to the right, because it's a positive four that's substituted in there, and three down. So, which one went four to the right and three down? Not this one. Four to the right, no, not this one, not that one. Four to the right is A. Hands if you got A, that is correct. Do we need another one of these? No, let's move on. Let's go to number, this was number 14. Let's go to 15. It reads, solve the polynomial equation negative 2x to the fifth negative 14x to the fourth, negative 12x cubed, equal to zero. So I'm going to cover these up. Do you have space on your uh, study guide? Bless you. To do work, yes? You guys have space? Yeah? Okay. So copy this one. Uh, I don't know if you have space down there, so, but you have space to the right. Is that correct? Go to the right of that. Write this one again. This equation, negative 2x to the fifth, negative 14x to the fourth, negative 12x cubed equals to zero. And it says by factoring. So since this is not a quadratic, we can't use power rangers, right? But what can, we, what can we look for? Yeah, make a note, G, C, F. Let's look for G, C, F first. What number divides each of the terms? Negative what? Negative 2 so far. What else? Does each term have an x? Yes. How about an x squared? Yes. How about an x cubed? Yes. How about an x fourth? No. The highest is x to the third. So that's going to be our GCF. So what do we have left? We're left with negative 2. And by the way, for those of you that are still struggling with this, we take the GCF and divide each term. So this is a giant 1, x to the fifth x to the third, we subtract the exponents, this is x to the second. Next, divide by negative 2x to the third. Negative 14 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And we're left with x? Oh, x7? Yeah, I did that on purpose to see if you were paying attention. 7x. Oh, yeah. 14 divided by 2. All right, and the last one, negative 2x to the third. So how many uh, times does negative 2 fit into negative 12? That's positive 6. And the x cubed is a giant 1, so they go away. And all that equals to 0. So can we still factor this? Yeah. Du, 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 du. We got 6, 7. Factors of 6 that add up to 7. What is it? 1 and 6. Okay, so that means x plus 1, x plus 6 equal to 0, and bring down the GCF as well, negative 2x cubed. What do I do from there? I have three factors now. Set them equal to 0. 
negative 2x cubed equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0, x plus 6 equal to 0. So, minus 1 minus 1, x equals negative 1, minus 6 minus 6, x equals negative 6. This one, uh, divide by negative 2, x cubed equal to 0, cube root to each side, so x still 0. So, what are those called? Tell your neighbor. What are those called? Of course, there are my solutions, but what else? Solutions, roots, zeros, x-intercepts. So look at your study guide, select your answer. Correct answer was, Jerry? What is it? A. Hands if you got A. Hey, Jerry, on the ball. Good job. Yeah. What's that? Let me check. All right, let's see if uh, Jerry is uh, correct. Uh, let's see. Zero, negative one, and negative six. And what did I write? Zero, negative one, negative six. So correct answer is A. All right. From one to five, I'll click the bar you with these. Do we need one more? All right, let's move on. So we are on number, what was number, this number what? What was it? 15, let's go to 16. Is it 16? Yeah. All right. So, before we answer this one, look up to the screen. Look at the screen. Zero equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Do we know how, how to solve this? Yes. Power Rangers, yada, yada. How many roots am I going to come up with at the end? x equals something, x equals something. How many? Two. What is the highest degree? Two. Same thing if I was to give you 0 equals x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x. We can't use power rangers here, but we need to check what? G, C, F. Is that correct? So that leaves us with x, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Can I still use power rangers on this one? Yes. So I end up with x equals 0, x equals something, and x equals something. How many roots? 3. What is the highest degree? 3. With that said, without even solving anything, look at problem number, what was it, 16? Tell your neighbor how many roots will this one have. All right. How many? Uh, Andrew? Three. And if you got three, yeah, that is correct. So what if it was like this? P of x equals negative uh, 2x to the 7th plus 5x to the 4th plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. So you never how many roots left here? How many roots for that one? 7. What is the highest degree? 7. Does the negative mean anything? No. Does this mean anything? No, they're not asking us to solve it. They're just asking us to understand whether, how many roots does it have. Do we need another one? All right, that was number what? Let's go to 17. What are the complex roots of that one? Before we go and solve that one, on your blank sheet of paper, write this down. Example, this was what, 17? 17 Q. And I'm going to write, what does it look like? Okay. Let's do, uh, Q of X equals X squared plus 121. All right. So to solve this, what kind of uh, equation is this? It's a quadratic. We need to set it equal to what? 
zero. So zero equals x squared plus 121. Now this one is not a difference of squares because there's no subtraction. This is not a trinomial, so we don't use power rules. So what do we do? Let's use square roots. That means we're going to isolate the, the x squared, yes? So what do I do? Subtract 121, subtract 121. So we end up with negative 121 equals to x squared. How do I cancel that squared? Square root, square root, this cancels that. X equals, now, we have a dilemma here, but we can rewrite this, can't we? Square root of 121 times negative 1. Yes, which means we end up with square root of 121 <coughs> times square root of negative 1 equals x. So, what is square root of 121? What is it? Plus minus what? 11. Okay. And what is square root of negative 1? And I'm going to box that in blue. What is square root of negative 1? Tell your neighbor. Is there such a thing in the real world? No. Is that why this is a what? Imaginer. This is I. So this is equal to x. So my solutions is plus minus 11i or 11i equals to x and negative 11i equals to x. With that said, go to number 17 on your study, gu study guide. Do that one, please. give you some time, and it reads q of x equals x squared plus 1. Show some work, set up your answer, and I'll wait for you. Alright, Andrew, pass them one. Megan, answer A, B, C, or D. Let's see how she did. Hands if you got C. That is correct. So, make sure you double check your work, and we need another one of these. No? Let's move on. That's number 17. Let's go to 18. Find the roots of the polynomial. Okay. So for this one, copy this on your, let's see, do you have space? Do you have space at the bottom? Do that at the bottom. That's fine. Copy the polynomial P of X equals 6X squared minus 12X plus 78. Let me move this up so I can do the work below. So, First things first, if we're going to solve this, what kind of uh, equation is it? It's a quadratic, so it needs to be equal to what? 0 equals 6x squared minus 12x plus 78. Now, we can use power rangers at that point. Multiply the first term times the last, I mean the coefficient, but that's going to be a big number, right? So you never what else we can do. What can we do? Very good. Check for GCF. Man, good conversations. My goodness. So what number divides all three terms? The third one doesn't have an X. Six. That is correct. So we're left with X squared. 12 divided by 6 is negative 2X. 78 divided by 6 is 13. And all that equal to 0. All right. So... We're still not done because we still need to factor this. Can we factor this anymore? Let's find out. 13, negative 2. So you never two numbers that multiply them, give us 13, and when you add them, give us negative 2. Are there any? No. So, think about it. When we cannot factor a trinomial, a quadratic trinomial, what other method do we use to find the roots? Talk about your neighbor. What other method do we use to find the roots? Man, you guys are so participatory. Long, uh, big word. I think Andres got this one, so. All right, Andres, pass someone. Who? Jocelyn. What method? Very good. She said the quadratic formula. X 
equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let me repeat that again just in case you forgot it. So you never again the quadratic formula. X equals minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. One more time, just, just in case we uh, miss it. So without looking at your notes, tell you never the quadratic formula. All right, yeah, x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Yeah, so this one, guys, I, those of you that were with me at Frank's Ride, we hammered this one, like, so much. You should wake up sometime. Quadratic formula, right? <laughs> x equals negative parentheses plus minus square root parentheses squared minus 4 parentheses parentheses over 2 parentheses. So let's start with this value right here and I'm, I'm going to use, uh, well we need values A, B, and C from our trinomial. Is that correct? <coughs> Bless you. So underneath here, look up guys, underneath here I want you to write AX squared plus BX, bless you, plus C. And then let's identify our values. What is A? A is a is 1, that is correct, B is negative 2, and C is 13. So I'm going to start with B because that's the first value here. So I'm going to substitute negative 2 and negative 2. What is A? A is 1, it goes here and here, and 13 goes at the end, 13, okay? All right. So, with that said, I'm going to go this way so I can uh, have room. So, what is negative times a negative? Right here, positive. Well, I'm going to go one more down. X equals. This is 2 plus minus. Uh, what is negative 2 squared? That's positive 4. What is negative 4 times 1? That's negative 4 times 13. That's negative 52 and all that over 2. Let me scoot up for those of you in the back. All right, so now I'm going to go this way. So, 2 plus minus square root of, what is 4 minus 52? Negative 48, yes, over 2. Next, uh, what is the square root of negative 48? Uh, you're like, how about uh, we break down this into uh, two factors? I'm going to rewrite this. This is 2 plus minus square root of, how about uh, negative 16 times 3? over 2. So far, is it dead? Yes? All right. So for right now, I'm going to leave a negative in there, but I'm going to, what is the square root of 16? Plus minus 4, right? So we got 2 plus minus 4, square root of negative 3, over 2. So, can we simplify 2 over 2? Yeah, so that becomes 1 plus minus can we simplify 4 square root of negative 3 divided by 2? Yeah. This is kind of like saying 4x divided by 2. What would we have left here? 2x. But since we have a square root of 3, we're left with what? 2 square root of negative 3. Now, I found a mistake on the, on the study guide. Look at your options right there on your study guide really quick. In other words, this is x equals 1 plus 
2 square root of negative 3 or 1 minus 2 square root of negative 3. Is there such an option? No. So what would be the closest one if you were to select an option? Let me, let me see. Yeah, the closest one will be C. So all we were needing is that negative inside the radical. So uh, I'll make a correction just for the sake of that. However, once again, if you cannot factor, make a note for yourself, please. Make a note here, asterisk, heart, huh, if cannot factor, use QF. Do you remember what QF stands for? Quadratic formula, yes. All right. From 1 to 5, I'll come to party with E. Yeah, 5, 4, 1. Do we need another one of these? What number was this one? 18? Let's go to 19. Man, we're rocking and rolling. Let's go. All right. Identify the vertical, I'm sorry. Identify the asymptotes, domain and range of the function g of x equals 1 over x plus 7 plus 3. Before we do this one, on your uh, Cornell notes, copy this down. What number was this one, 19? So example 19 cubed. And we're going to write g of x equals 1 over x minus 5 plus 2. So, just so that we remember what this looks like, the general rule was g of x, uh, g of x equals a times 1 over x minus h plus k. You guys remember that? Yes? So what does h do to the entire function? Moves it to the what? Right or left. Okay. About k? Up and down. However, this also plays another role. What is this one called aside from moving it left or right? Remember what this one's called? Very good. The v a, vertical asymptote. So, by looking at it, what is my vertical asymptote for this one? 5, that is correct. How about my h, a, what is my horizontal asymptote? Take your neighbor. 2, that is correct. The k is our horizontal asymptote. Label it if you forgot. h, a, it's this one. v, a, it's that one. Bless you. Now, if you don't see it, the only thing that we should do for this one is do this. X minus 5 equal to 0 plus 5 plus 5. What is my VA? X equals 5. What is this also called when we take the denominator set it equal to 0? This is called the excluded value. That means that value we will not use in the solution. Okay? So for x values, we can use any value, is that correct? Yes, so my domain would be, domain would be x such that, x such that, uh, oh, and then I would write all real numbers. However, what? x cannot equal to what? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going too fast or? And we're like, ah, oh, Miss Chu's because I come back from right now, it's like barely falling asleep in the morning. And anyways, all right. So once again, H A up oh, H A and B A. All right. So let's go to number 19 on your study guide. 19 on the study guide. There's number 19. We got g of x equals 1 over x plus 7 plus 3. So, by looking at it, do you know how to find your VA? Yes, Mr. Q. How about your HA? 
Yes, Mr. Cube. All right, good. Also, what is our excluded value? I'll give you some time for that. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. All right, check with the neighbor, see what they got for their VA, HA, and excluded value, and see what their answer, what was their answer that say, they selected. All right, VA, Arely, go. Negative seven, hands if you got that. That is correct, or you can set this one equal to zero. Solve, minus seven, minus seven. X equals negative 7. That's also our excluded value. Is that correct? What is our HA, everyone? HA is Y equals 3. Bless you. So with that said, answer. Let's see. EB negative 7. Which one has negative 7? Which one's excluded? A, negative 7, negative 7, negative 3. No. Negative 7, negative 7, positive 3. Answer. D. Hands, have you got that? All right. What number was this? 18? 18? 19. I will stop at 19. So for tonight, tell your neighbor the home play you're going to revisit again because it's due tomorrow. Numbers 14 through 19 tonight. Revisit those again. Do those again, please. And what else are you supposed to bring tomorrow? Tell your neighbor, please. Sign, great uh, screenshot that you took from Canvas. I'm going to stop the video at this time. If any questions, ask your neighbors. Yeah? All right. See you guys tomorrow. Uh,